today we are going to discuss about uh, joint distributions so so far we have a random variable and we defined associated uh, cdf or pdf with this then what if uh, if i have more than one random variable right so what is random variable random variable basically it we use it to define some uh, events or some experiment so if i am I have to deal with uh, two events which are characterized by two random variables and I have to deal with their distributions uh, what I am going to do. So we are, for that we are going to define this notion of uh, joint distribution. Okay. So now when I say joint distribution I am at least definitely interested in more than one random variable. So let's say I have a given a set of random variables, m random variables. I'm going to take m to be finite. I'm taking them to be different random variables, but still defined on the same probability space. I can define multiple random variables on the same probability space, right? It's not necessary that there is only one way, one random variable on a probability space. Now, the joint cumulative distribution. or we I'm just we have already been calling it as CDF is the function Rm and uh, defined by It is simple, the straightforward extension of the definition of CDF. Okay, CDF we had just one random variable, but now we have multiple random variables. So we are going to call joint CDF to be this quantity. The probability that, so I am interested in something happen jointly, that is x1 being less than equals to x small x1, x2 to be also less than or equals to some other value x2 and so on. So simultaneously we want all this to happen and that is now it is going to be characterized by this capital function which we are going to call it as joint CDF. So, so this will give us probability of events concerning all these random variables and in, in a joint sense. I am looking all of them and looking them in a joint way. So suppose let us say just for an example let us say I am interested in a random variable x1 and x2. Let us say both x1 and x2 takes value on some real line. Okay, These are a random variable defined on, okay, on some where I will take omega to be let us say r and f to be the sigma algebra defined over that. Okay. Now I am interested in an event that x1 and x2 they lie in some rectangle. So when I do experiment 1 that is the outcome I denote as x1 and uh, when I do it second time or uh, in another experiment when I do it I will get something outcome which I am going to denote it as x2. I want that value, this value x1 and x2 together in a joint sense lie in some rectangle. That is, I am interested in this event x1 belonging to some in the event a, b 
or uh, and uh, x2 belongs to the value a prime b prime. So I said x1 can take any value on the real line, but now I am interested in knowing that okay that it takes value in the interval a comma b and that x2 takes in the interval x2 a, a, a to prime a prime b prime. So what I am interested in suppose let us say this a b a prime b prime are positive quantities a b this is my x axis the x axis is going to denote the outcome of x1 and y axis is going to denote the outcome of x2 let us say this quantity is like a, here it is a prime b prime. What I am asking is by this probability I am interested in that this jointly x1 and x2 falling in this box okay, this is what uh, this probability is asking you. Now you can simply expand this uh, you can write it as uh, this probability as simply probability that x1 less than or equals to b x2 less than or equals to b prime. So this whole if you want to identify this region what you can do is you can restrict yourself to region which is falling below this b prime b bar b prime and uh, some falling x1 taking value below x1 x1 taking value below b then it is like covering the whole region right like uh, the entire thing and then from this you can further remove all this portion which is covered by this portion and then you can further restrict yourself to the region covered by this portion okay let me so if i want to just want to find this area by writing my this event in terms of like this say like i right now i have defined my cdf like uh, in, like this like x1 taking value x1 uh, less than or equals to x1 and x2 so i want to basically write this probability something look similar like this so first i would do this but if i do this what i am doing i am getting all the area or all the probability of something happening in this entire region but that's not all the thing i want I want only in this area. So what I am going to do, I am going to remove all the probability concerning the events that is falling in this region and something happening below this region. So right, I will, when I do this, So when I do this, this portion here, I removed it twice. So I am just going to add that back. So whatever this joint event I am interested in can be now expressed like this. Right? It is just like just see that which portion is covered. Now we know that this this is nothing but in terms of this notation. This is nothing but f of x1 x2 of b b prime minus f of x1 x2 b b prime minus so by defining my joint cdf like this i will be able to write that joint events in terms of this uh, joint pdf cdf like this okay so basically two events i want 
two uh, experiments, I want to see that the outcome of the two events jointly lie in this interval. I could express in terms of this uh, joint CDF. That is why we are going to. That is where we are going to use this uh, joint CDFs for. This one, this one, yeah, what it should be? A or A prime, A prime, that's right, okay. Right, okay, fine. Um, so now, this we are going to say in general, this is what we have defined here, like uh, this I have defined for any random variables, x1, x2, xm given to you and for them I am going to de define this joint CDF like that in terms of this probabilities, okay. Notice that each of this x1 being smaller than or equal to small x1, so each of them give rise to an event which is lies in my sigma algebra script f, right. So let us call this as some event a1, this call let us and event something and let us call this as some event a. I am asking basically probably there all these hap events happening and that like uh, this probability will is going to define me what is that event is joint event is going to be. Okay, so to define that I really do not need to care about what kind of random variable I am dealing with, that is fine, this is simply a definition. Once I have this probability space here, that is fine, I, all I need this probability here to define this event. Now suppose if my x1, x2 all the way xm are discrete. Then simply we can uh, just simplify this notation, uh, then we can instead of uh, joint uh, CDF, we can just say joint probability mass function and then write probability that This is simply because I have assumed that all this x1, x2, they are all discrete random variable. Now I am just interested in, okay, x1 taking this particular value. So we know that uh, if, in uh, earlier we discussed that if x is a continuous random variable, this particular question of asking x taking a particular value does not make sense. But now it is a discrete random variable, so I could uh, write like this. Now suppose, so here I have given some set of points u1, u2 and um. If instead I am interested in knowing this prob, these values taking in some set A which is a subset of Rm. What I mean by this? Earlier I have asked them this values taking this one particular values u1, u2 but instead of that I will give a set now. Right here, when I give I give a set, R was a set, like I did not ask you any particular two points here, okay. In that case, then we are going to write, or going to simply probability that x1, x1 belonging to A. This is simply going to be, I am then going to do the sum over all points in that set A.
it is just that like instead of a uh, interested in one particular point suppose if you think m equals to 2 that is i mean the set play instead of asking my random variable taking any two points i am interested in knowing it taking a subset of values so then i simply take all the points and add because i am interested in discrete random variable here this summation is at most over a countable countably many terms so now this is for the discrete case so we also have in analogy with uh, our uh, continuous random variable right we could also define a jointly continuous random variable here So, if you recall earlier, we said that a random variable is continuous if there exists a function f of x such that its uh, CDF, capital F of x can be written as integration of uh, this uh, f of x. Now, just extending that notion to my joint random, random variables, we are going to say that x1, x2, xm are jointly continuous. If I mean we are saying there exists some function such that and the integration variables are du1, du2 all the way up to du. So when m equals to 1 there, this is our earlier definition of continuous random variable, right? So now we have just extended the definition for the case when m is greater than 1. So now there are multiple integrals here. So when I do this integration over all the variables here that corresponds to each of this random variable, then I am going to get uh, this uh, CDF back. If this happens, then I am going to call my random variables x1, x2 all the way up to xm as jointly continuous random variables. Okay. So now, so we are going to still go through a couple of more uh, definitions like this which are mostly analogous to what we have already studied for a single random variable, but now we are just extending that notion to more than one random variables. So now we are going to denote f of x. Suppose let us say, oh by the way before I forget, so this we are going to call as joint PDF of my random variables x1, x2. To xk. Okay. Now let's say now x1 and x2 are jointly continuous. Okay. Now let's say for some x1 and x2. So now I am going to write which I am going to denote it as So, okay, what I did here, I know x1, x2 are jointly continuous, so I know this quantity exists. Now, in this, 
Suppose I hold x1, some number, real number fixed, but I let x2 go to infinity, okay? That limit, if it exists, I am going to call it as f of x, x1, okay? So now, and uh, this limit, I am also like instead of a uh, writing this x2 tend to infinity, I could sometime replace this random variable x2 by plus infinity itself. So, okay, why this limit should exist? x1 is fixed, like I am, see the way I have written is, I am looking at some particular x1 now, but now in this uh, joint CDF, I am letting x2 go to infinity. So that means I am actually varying this random, this quantity x2 all the, like I am taking it increasing up to infinity, okay. And now I might claim or we want to now argue that this limit exists. What it should take value, but uh, why x2? No, I am, we are interested in this function converging to some value. X2 is anyway going to infinity. But where is this function going? Now, this is I have defined. This is I have defined like this is all. So, this is what our interest like. I s Let's focus this. Okay, fine. So, this quantity is anyway bounded, right? By definition, whatever it is like this, this is a probability that has to, but boundedness does not mean in the, the limit exists, right? Unless you can argue that this is a monotone or something. So, if it is monotone and bounded, we know limit exists. Okay, but is this quantity then monotone? Yes, why is that? Just look at this. I have fixed x1, but I am now letting go x2 to infinity. I am making it x2 larger and larger. That means I am relaxing basically this event, right? So, because of that, this probability has to increase as I increase x2. So, in a way, because of that, this function here as I, whatever, like here I have fixed x1 and letting x2 increase. So, this should be, in x2, it should be monotonically increasing. Even the other way is to like if I hold x2, fix and x1 let go to infinity, this should be monotonically increasing. And that limit, we are going to call it as f of x, x1 here, okay. What basically what we are doing? We are restricting x1 to be less than or equals to x1 by I let x2 to take any value, right. Like I really did not care about my second experiment. That means as if like I am only worried about my first experiment, right? Anything happens in my second experiment, I am fine. Because anyway, like x2 is going to be less than or equal to infinity, okay? So that is why we are going to denote it like f of x, x1. And uh, sometimes just to make it specific, we will just write it like a, when, when this is like a here, when I write this is f of x, x1 there is no implication that I was looking at a joint CDF, right? Because I am, I got this from the joint PDF. Just to make that specific, specify that we will write x1, x2 and put the second variable to plus infinity. Just to make that I got this from my joint CDF. So now, See this whatever argument I made here, you should make it more precise by using uh, your probability loss. Like this function is nothing but probability, and we have some loss defined on this probability. Going back to those basic definitions, you should be able to convince yourself yes, this this limit is well defined. Okay. Fine. So now let's go back to 
this definition of joint CDF itself, my joint CDF, I assumed x1 and x2 are jointly continuous, right? So there should exist a function here f x1 x1 such that So, I could write this as if I just do it for x2 and dx1, whatever I know this function f of x exists. Now, what I am basically doing is I am integrating it over the second variable x2 over here. So, that will give me some another function. Let me call it up. Okay. So, as, as soon as I say x1 and x2, I know there is a joint PDF exist. Now, if I am integrate it over one of the variable, here it is variable 2, then I got this which I am going to call as marginal, what is it called, uh, marginal PDF. So, as soon as I have this jointly continuous random variable here, I can derive this marginal PDFs by integrating over the variable which I do not want in this. So, for example, here I had jointly continuous random variables x1 and x2, but I am only interested in x1 now. So, when I want x1, I just integrated over, over this joint PDF over the variable x2 and I got uh, this marginal PDF. Okay, so, basically when I did this integration, I just like removed all the information related to x2 like I am just focusing on my random variable x1. That is why I am going to call this uh, marginal PDF here. So, this I just defined it for two variables, but you can do it for n number, m number of uh, random variable. Suppose here you have this joint PDF which is defined over uh, m random variable m arguments here. If you just want to focus only on the first two random variables, just integrate it over the other random variables. And then that uh, only the first two random variables, it is still like a marginal PDF, we are going to call it as still marginal PDF. But it will be clear to us whether we have only focusing on two random variables or one random variables and not necessarily the first two random variables, it could be any two random variables among the m random variables, okay. It is just like which random variables we want to focus on, we keep it in the joint PDF and the other random variables will, other variables will just integrate over. So, fine. Now, we just uh, extended the notion of uh, continuous random variables to more than one random variables and then once we had that, then we have to look at the notion of uh, joint probability distribution functions and the marginal probability distribution functions. Okay, what other things we had? So, we had also defined the characteristics functions, right? Okay, before uh, we move to characteristic function. So, this is for continuous random variables. What if, how, how this works for the discrete random variables? The same thing, like for the discrete random variables, I know there is a probability mass function and uh, like a, so I should, be, I should call this, so this is like a joint probability mass function. I can also derive marginal probability mass function out of it by just summing it over the variables which I do not want like. I am going to sum over what? Over 1 to infinity, all the values. Now, all the possible values uh, that x can take, so not 1 to infinity, just uh, whatever the possible values. So, suppose just to consider the case, probability that x1 equals to u1 and uh, 
x2 equals to u2. I want to, so this is like a joint probability mass function over discrete random variable x1 and x2. I want to get a marginal PMF out of this. So let's say I want a marginal PMF of random variable x1. How we are going to do that? So I'll just sum it over u2 over what? We'll just uh, sum it u2 over u omega whatever possible value that u2 can take. Okay, then I'm going to get it and only in terms of u1, then uh, that whatever that remains, I'm going to call it as a marginal probability mass function. So now, now moving on to characteristic function. So we had defined characteristic function for one random variable. Now how it works for joint, um, we have uh, multiple uh, random variables, m random, how I can define joint characteristic function of a set of random variables. So this works like this. It is going to be defined x1, x2 up to x1. It's simple, right? Like we have just uh, added summed weight. We have taken the weighted sum of all the random variables, and then finding its characteristic function. So, when I have only one random variable, I had only this part, e to the power j, u1 of x. Now I have m random variables. So what I'll do is I'm going to now define this characteristic function over m variables. So now the characteristic function is over Rm. Okay. So this characteristic function uh, is now a function because it takes as argument and this is like a. So it takes m inputs as and then gives a value which could be complex. So basically what we did is we took a weighted sum of all my random variables. So if you are going to call this as some new random variable y, which is and for that I am now finding the characteristic function. So this is how we are going to define characteristic function of a set of random variables. So fine. So now we have basically extended uh, this notion of uh, CDF, PDF, probability mass function from single random variable to set of random variables. <coughs> so now let us see what we mean by independence or dependence of these random variables. Okay. So now we have the set of m random variables. Okay. So earlier we have this notion of independence on the sets on events, right? We said that two events A and B are independent if the joint probability of these events splits, like it can be written as probability of each of these events. But now, so there we are clear what we mean by independence of two events. Now, we have also dealing with two random variables here. Even though they are defined on the same probability space, 
what is there any relation between them like what should be what be should be the appropriate notions to study that relation so here we also we could define independence of this random variables okay we have set of random variables we can say whether they are independent or not so for that we are going to use the following definition So, take any set of random variables m, we are going to call them independent if for any Borel subsets, this subset are, are from real line R such that if you look at these events, so x1 belonging to A1, Borel set A1 is an event, right? So, this belongs to the sigma algebra, all of them. Now, if these events are independent, then we are going to call this random variables to be independent. So, remember that this has to happen for any Borel subset. It is not that if you just guarantee me for a particular set of Borel sets, uh, we are not going to call them independent. Okay. So, earlier we defined as events to be independent as long as if you just define this independent, that is fine. I mean if, if this take this probabilities and their joint probability splits, then we call them independent. But now if you want to say the random variables are independent, this event should be independent for every possible Borel subsets. Okay? A set of random variables on this, they may be independent or may not be independent. Okay? So, we will uh, uh, we will in encounter uh, many cases uh, later, we will see that uh, specific examples where they can be independent or may not be independent at all. So, fine. So, now as a consequence of this definition, the following observation is going to be straightforward. I will just write it and we will discuss it. What do you mean by that is so if this random variable x1, x2 all the way xm, if they are independent, that means if this condition holds, then if you look there joint CDF, that is going to split like this. So, we defined what is this joint CDF, okay? and from this joint CDF, we got this marginal CDF in this fashion. If this joint CDF could be written as this product of marginal CDF. I mean, we are saying that if the random variables are independent, if and only if this case holds. Is that obvious?
So, okay, let us assume that uh, the my random variables are independent. That means these sets here are all independent. That means when I have this joint CDF, that is nothing but this joint PDF, sorry, this joint probability that splits right basically because of this, because of this like this is everything is like on some event. Let us call this as uh, this, this is this I can think of saying that x1 belonging to a1, some set a1 which is defined by x1 like that and all the way up to am. Then already I know that if x1, x2, xm all the way up to xm are independent, this probability splits and that is already this. Now other way is also obvious, right? If it splits, then this definition of independence already holds. So fine. So most of the time, we are going to use this as a condition to check whether my set of random variables are independent or not. We are just going to first find their joint CDF. Okay. By the way, first, when somebody gives you a set of random variables. You should ask them to give that their complete description. Their co description is complete when you have their joint CDF or joint PMF. Okay, only from that you can derive their marginal PDF or marginal probability mass function. But a complete description of all these joint random variables is complete when you have their joint PMF or uh, or their uh, PDFs, but if you, uh, if I just give you a set of random variables and I give their marginal PDFs or PMF, then their characterization is not complete. Is that clear to you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, fine. Uh, uh, just let me adjust this. So we we want like okay, we are going to assume this is true, and then we have to argue this condition definition holds, right? Okay. So if that definition holds. You are saying we have we have shown this only for specific aboral sets which are like a negative uh, sets. What about the other ones? Okay, let's see that. So, is it the question then is is it possible that for any boral set of boral sets? I could get the split like this if this holds and I could write it in this fashion. Okay. Mm. Okay, let us see that uh, Okay, so still this. So by this, I all know is probability that x1 is greater than x1, x1 is greater than xm. But what I am interested in is not just this, but x1 belonging to some set and xm belonging to some set am. I should guarantee this. Okay. Okay, let us uh, see if there is a straightforward way to argue this. 
so okay let's uh, go back so what is this instead of this so suppose instead of this definition right uh, instead of this I call this as my definition let us say a1 up to a m now these are in terms of Borel sets okay so so this is fine right like I do not need to just uh, look at uh, the negative half of the intervals but I would be taking any Borel sets here if this is true then whatever you are asking is already done we need to somehow connect that what you are saying that could be still represented in terms of this uh, half intervals but that should be doable right like uh, we can take a uh, uh, I mean we have to bit do more manipulation that half intervals we have to whatever set you are interested in we have to subtract add so that we get focus only on those and then appropriately define this so if you want to get this definition to hold for any Borel sets this this is what is required but we did not define it in this way we only defined in terms of some intervals now how to translate this sets into those corresponding intervals I mean that requires I think a bit more argument how to get those uh, any Borel set in terms of those intervals and then restrict yourself to definitions on this uh, but we will we'll not go into that uh, we will just uh, assume that uh, yes it is indeed required it for all Borel sets but as long as uh, we verify it for uh, some negative intervals like some some half of the intervals we are fine okay. So when I define this condition for independence we just defined in terms of this uh, joint uh, CDF right but now we can specifically look at what happens if my random variables are jointly continuous okay then I, ha I know I have a joint PDF okay so in that case if if I know that my random variables are jointly continuous then instead of uh, looking at the split DS being fit splitting like this or factoring like this I, I, I can as well directly look into my PDF splitting in this fashion okay. So I am just going to state that and uh, those are consequences of this definition I can just verify that. then independence is equivalent to joint PDF factors so once I told you my random variables are jointly continuous I have a joint PDF and then if this joint PDF factors or splits then it is already same as saying this then that is why my ra ra random variables are independent and another characterization is now I have just talked about jointly continuous if they are discrete then what do you expect so if jointly continuous fine I expect it if it is a discrete what you are going to focus if you know discrete then you are already focusing on joint probability mass function right what do you expect like a joint mass prob probabilities and uh, marginal prob mass pro marginal uh, probability mass functions behave where if they are uh, independent and this is already there right they again they have to split in this fashion the joint probability mass function is going to split and that can be written as product of margin uh, 
మార్చిన ప్రాబిలిటీ మాస్ ఫంక్షన్ so fine we have another characterization like uh, of my joint random variables in terms of the characteristics function what do you expect <laughs> if my random variables so by the way like here when i define this joint characteristics function i define for a uh, continuous random variables but uh, if uh, they are discrete random variables and take uh, non negative values you can define appropriately the z transform okay how we are going to do it is the uh, same if it is it is simply like uh, expectation of z and you have the numerator which you can take it as a sum okay i'll just uh, leave you to to study this portion like uh, how you are going to define the cash the z transform of a set of random variables okay in which is uh, i am just you should uh, study that yourself uh, how it is uh, defined uh, uh, in comparison to a single random variable earlier okay so for from single variable to multiple random variables we extended the joint characteristic function how about my discrete non negative random variables we are going to ex extend the z transform from one random variable to multiple random variables okay now coming back to independence <laughs> what do you expect if my random let's say i have jointly continuous random variables and i have their uh, characteristic function defined like this what do you expect do you expect them to split do you understand what i mean by split so are you guys following what i mean by split or factors here by factors i mean like it is just like it, it is it is now each function is of a single variable here earlier it is like function of multiple variables now it is this of one variable now here i have a cache function of set of random variables if they are independent what do you expect again you can show that this also splits okay so suppose okay instead of this words so what we can say if x1 x2 all the way up to x1 they are all independent then this is nothing but product so you can use any of these properties to verify if you have the set of random variables you have they are independent or not okay so fine so so we basically just extended the notion of independence to set of uh, random variables and uh, we just uh, gave you the properties like uh, what we when is uh, what does that mean what does or how to verify that uh, my independence holds it just saying that uh, my cdf splits or pdf or pmf or uh, my pdf split appropriately whether it is a discrete or a continuous random variable and also further if it is we can check that uh, if it's uh, characteristic function splits then also we know it's going to be a continuous random variable okay now we will just move on to conditional densities so so far we focused on things happening jointly 
okay random variable outcome of random variable x1 is this and outcome of random variable x2 is this this happening jointly something happening but now instead of this you want to condition like you say that okay first random variable give me this I have observed this after this what is the probability that my second random variable give me some specific value right so suppose let us say you are uh, whatever like two experiments you are doing either simultaneously or sequentially if you happen to see that in one experiment you have observed some outcome and knowing that what is your uh, inference going to be about the second uh, experiment right for example uh, you know like uh, suppose you want to uh, measure uh, temperature in the in the afternoon and at the at midnight okay these are let's say two random variables temperature in the afternoon and at midnight suppose you notice that uh, in the afternoon temperature was pretty hot like uh, i mean i'm talking about the mumbai maybe it may not apply so you notice that afternoon temperature was uh, pretty hot like it was close to 35 degrees or something then you have already observed it. now you want to infer suppose you are about your other and what will be the temperature that it's going to be at the midnight it's unlikely that it is going to fall to zero right if it was already hot in the afternoon so such kind of so something already happened in the afternoon have some influence on what will be the temperature in the night so there we will be interested in knowing such conditional densities there are two events i mean two outcomes i am observing if i know something has already happened like uh, if if they are independent what we already saw basic earlier then independence basically say that this had no relation with the other like if your temperature whatever you are going to observe in the afternoon has uh, is going to not tell you anything about what is going to happen at night but if there is a relation okay this conditional densities or like conditional observation should tell us or we should able to model such observation through this uh, conditional densities okay so so we will just focus on now the joint random variables okay so this is the joint pdf we have and we already know that from this i can always derive a marginal by integrating this function over x here in this case if i want to derive marginal for y Now we are going to define conditional probability density function as which I am going to define as as f x q and y Now you notice that what we are doing is basically extending the notion of conditioning conditional events conditional probabilities to conditional densities remember earlier we had defined probability that a given b is equal to probability that a intersection b divided by probability of a 
that is how we define conditional probabilities right. But now we are we are extending that notion to random variables. We have two random variables okay they have associated uh, PDFs now what is the conditional probability densities. Now we are just saying that we are going to denote conditional density of x given y like this and that is defined as simply the joint PDF divided by marginal PDF. Once you have this joint PDF you, you already have a marginal PDF through this relation okay. So and uh, naturally to make this uh, well defined we will assume that uh, this y is such that uh, f of y at point y is going to be positive. Similarly we, the way we assume that uh, when we wanted to define probability that a given b when we wanted to make that to give the definition we assume that probability of b is positive right. So same way we will also assume that this density at point y is going to be positive. So by the way we did not discuss but is it true that uh, PDF is always a non-negative quantity? Yes, no? From which step? From which uh, part of our discussion it is true? Yeah, so let us go to our uh, definition of PDF. So PDF we said we are going to define it for a continuous random variable and when that happens, uh, so our first time the PDF come to our picture is when we said that if CDF f of x capital F of x can be written as integration of this function f of x then we are going to call that as CDF. So that is our first incurrence of this uh, probability density function right. Is it true that there such a function has to be positive to make that definition hold? Why? Uh, if it is negative what happens? At what point? Like I can there can be some negative points but uh, integ So right if it is negative at some point I can just focus my CDF at that point and if I apply that that becomes a negative quantity which uh, may not be and uh, I always know that my CDF is a monotone function okay. So, so what would you say? If I just take it uh, at two points, let us say f of x, x1 and f of x at two point, then this is going to be what? Let us assume x1 is going to be larger than x2. So if fx happens to be negative at any point, then this relation will not hold, right? So the, for that, like it is necessary that my PDF is always going to be a non-negative quantity. So, but here we will just ensure that this is going to be to define my conditional probability we will just ensure that that is strictly positive okay. Okay, now once we have defined this uh, conditional probability density function we are going to define Yeah, so here yeah. yeah, now then you have to define like suppose if you just let f i y equals 0 you have a case where divide by 0 you if you want to define that infinity so let just make it decide I do not want to incur such a case. Okay. So, and another case it does not make sense like if I want to condition on certain event which is not happening 
in analogy with our conditional probability, then there is nothing to do with that, right? So, okay, let us define this uh, conditional expectation where, where we are going to incur, uh, where we are going to use this conditional PDF. Yeah, so that is what like I am interested in conditioning on such wise. Yeah, such wise only. Yeah, where it is uh, 0, maybe I just I am not interested there. Yeah, even like some point is not happening or uh, let us say something is not happening, let us call that as imaginary for us, which is not happening in real world that happens in imaginary world. Suppose that y is something imaginary for me and I am still interested in that imaginary thing. Fine, then you have to like appropriately define like uh, because this is not going to be well defined in this case, okay. Now, if, if, if you are still interested to understand such cases, you need to be just more careful here, okay. So, then you are going to call expectation. So, we are going to define expectation of conditional distribution as expectation of x at given that y is equals to y. This we are going to define it in terms of this conditional density. So, we are just saying that earlier we, we, we had just defined expectation of x without conditioning. So, there we, we defined expectation of x if x is a continuous random variable we had defined them it should be simply integration or uh, integration of x f of x. But now I am interested in the conditioned one. So, I am interested in expectation of x conditioning upon the event that y has taken random variable y has taken a particular value small y. Then we are going to say that okay in that case you restrict yourself to this pdf and then find the integration. By the way check that this is also a pdf. What we mean by pdf? So if you are going to this random variable x once you condition on the event y equals to y then that is an another e random variable that is just like a conditioned you have conditioned your events and that will have an associated CDF and that is the associated CDF it can be expressed through this conditional uh, PDF. So, this is indeed again a, it this corresponds to a PDF of that uh, conditioned uh, random variable ok. So, fine now I have an another condition PDF. Now, I am going to define my expectation condition on this event through this uh, new PDF. So, this is how we are going to define our conditional PDF. So, if we ask you, if I give you two event and I am completing my description of these two random variables only when I give you it is a joint PDF or like if I say they are independent and then I just give you their marginal PDF then also fine you have full description and then if I want you to compute the expectation you have to go with first compute uh, your uh, conditional probability density function and then use it ok. So, quick question. If my x and y are independent what is this conditional PDF is going to look like? Yeah, so this is going to split by definition, right? Then that f of y cancels, it is simply going to be the marginal one. So, now here I conditioned on a particular realization of y, y. So, is this a quantity is going to be a deterministic quantity? at the end you will end up some with some number. 
yeah so this is like uh, integration right like expectation like once you tell me what is y this is some deterministic number expectation i can compute if i change y is it going to still remain same may or may not be right it could possibly change so it depends on which value i am conditioning on so if i don't specify which value of y i am conditioning on i am going to simply write it as expectation of x given y here i have not just specified you anything y and this quantity is going to be random depending on which value y is going to take its value is going to be appropriately we you need to com compute its value appropriately so even though when you condition on a specific instead of y this is going to be deterministic whereas this is going to be random fine so i wanted to start with the correlation and covariance but uh, we will not be able to go so fine we are going to stop here